Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. We got the 42 out here at the park pond. It's actually sprinkling. I just got a thunder warning, so I don't know how long I'm going to be out here or if I even make it out of here. You hear that thunder, lightning? <laughs> All right. So, um, so this is my 12S42. We're actually going to run it on 8S. I got a set of 6S twins for 12S, but I'm not sure how the boat's going to run. Okay, I just rebuilt this 1400 kV CM motor. It's a 12S capable motor uh, Cause I burnt the rotor up and I just rebuilt it. I took it out one time and I, I, uh, I Slung a blade off of a propeller bent my shaft. So I just put a quarter inch to 3 16th cable in Okay, so we'll see we'll see so i'm gonna give you the guys the rundown we're gonna run the boat and if we don't run 12s i'll show you my setup when we get back to the shop so um because i had a, a request to show you like where i found works on this boat so uh, stick around big b we're not clad our suit okay okay so i'm running a, a what is this? I think it's a 400 amp. I think it's a 400 amp. Is it 300 or 400? I think it's a 400 amp flyer. Okay. Um, it does not have a BEC. So I'm actually using this little uh, lithium ion pack for my BEC. The motor is a TP Power 4070 1400 kV CM motor, which is a special motor, basically a drag style motor, not made for boats, really. Uh, you can run them in boats, and they're fast as all get out in boats, but you have to treat them like a baby. You have to do your pass, bring it in, check temps, check your speed. It, it's a drag style motor, you know? So uh, I've got my, t I think the reason I blew this motor or smoked the rotor was because I was running my timing on like 10 it's a delta you got to run it on zero so it's on zero okay i got the 6500 smc hcl hps in i uh upgraded my servo to a standard size 40 kilograms d uh the power hd servo which has been like great that's actually been a great mod I, I made a carbon fiber mount and i mounted the servo on that um i'm running a speedmaster large Speedmaster quarter inch uh, strut. I had to thin the thickness of it, but it's actually a great strut for this boat. All right, stock rudder and rudder setback, but I actually um, I put a shim and I set my my drive line off the transom a little bit. Last time I had this boat out, well, the first two times I ran this boat with this motor, it was a 90 mile an hour boat, 94, 95 if I remember right. So, see what I mean? It kind of sounds funny to me. It kind of sounds funny, and, and I'm just worried about it. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of baby it today. Um, I might have to get another motor. I, I might have went a little too extreme because this is a heavy boat. It's a heavy boat, and I think I'm asking too much of that motor. So I may actually take this motor out and get a lower KV for 12S because I really want to run the boat on 12S. So um, I'm, I'm going to tape it up, but I'm going to be going in and out. I just want to see if I have any leaks. This first go around, I'm going to throw some tape on here. Uh, I think I addressed the leak, but I just want to make sure because we're going to take, if it runs good today, we're going to take it to the speed run spot. So um, my, my Delta Force, I've got it all tore down. I got the whole everything off the transom. I just reinforced the transom while I was waiting on that Speedmaster rudder. So the Vortex will be out in a couple days probably. Give me time to rebuild it, rebuild the transom anyway. So in the meantime, we'll run a couple other boats. I actually have my Animal Twin Cat with me. Woo! Sounds good. It sounds good, but it just sputtered a while ago. I got my animal twin cat with me in case this don't work good. I could discharge the success twins. See, it's raining. So we'll see. I got a, a cut back 1916, which is a 48 millimeter prop, if I'm not mistaken. I got it cut down to 46.
Yeah, it was just sputtering. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so it's sputtering there for at the takeoff. We're gonna do another pass. Okay, let me get this thing trimmed out real quick. <laughs> yeah, I have my travel wood, 150 maxed out. With that extended rudder and strut on here, I gotta turn my, my steering trim back. Cause she'll, she'll wanna spin out on me. Okay. All right, one more pass and we'll bring it back. Got her warmed up now. <laughs> She's running a little rich, boys. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was afraid that that motor rebuild wasn't like on the money, you know? Oh man, that, that makes me feel better that it's kind of running good. So let's check the temps. I think I got that, the settings right on the ESC. It is kind of sputtering. Like whenever I go to take off, it'll sputter. So I don't know what the hell that is. Oh man, I missed this boat. I've missed it, man. It's a 90 mile, an hour. well, it's a 106 mile an hour boat, but it's, I've only got 106 mile an hour with it one time. So I can't call it a 106 mile an hour boat. It's, it's a 90 mile an hour boat all day long, all day long, all day long. So let, let me, let me spool it up. Let's see what that thing sounds like. All right, well, Woo! okay, sounded good right there. Maybe I was just running her a little rich. I had to uh, tone that needle back a little bit. <laughs> if we uh, if we don't have any water in here, I'll leave the tape off. I definitely want to get temps because this is a, 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 a really, really like hot setup and it's really built to do speed runs, you know? I built it to do saw passes, basically. It's not an oval boat with this motor. Okay, so the temps are decent. 106, 93, 109. The ESC, it, hell, it's 89 degrees. 99 right there. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, I do have some water, and it looks like it's right here. I've always had problems, issues with... This through-hole grommet leaking. So, so what I do, I actually use um, some marine adhesive when I slid this. Oh, well, I, I had to shim up my stuffing tube. Okay, I had to shim this up. Uh, and whenever I put the heat shrink on to shim it up, I put silicone in the heat shrink so no water would go through. And when I put it through the hole, I put some adhesive and it leaked. So I've, I've been using CA around this. <laughs> CA, thin CA, and it, it actually works, but it, you have to do it every now and then. So it actually, it actually handled pretty good. The temps are good, so let's run it. Let's run it. Let's freaking run it. 1400 KV on 8S, okay? I'm waiting on satellites. It's got four. That should be good, right? four satellites <laughs> yep I missed the old 42 I did man I missed this old boat I uh, had the cable for about a week now and um, I got wrapped up on that Delta Force Vortex build so let's go let's go hopefully there's no okay so she took off good that time I just had her running lean rich Nice. Do two pass. Oh, let's do that again. I'll do two passes and we'll bring it in and check the temps again. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> oh boy. I know this is kind of repetitive, but uh, I don't want to mess this motor up. So the motor's $200, then another, a new rotor, that's a $300 motor right there, basically. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to, uh, trying to take it easy. Read, probably about 65. Oh, damn. 71 in the freaking park pond. Let's go. Let's freaking go on 8S. We got six more S's to go on it. Oh boy, more S's and P's, the more, the faster you go. More S's and P's, the more faster you go, boy. All right. Okay, 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 okay. So that prop's good for it. That prop's good for it. All right, 71. Start. It's coming down now. Let me check this lens real quick. All right. Man, you gotta be dedicated to freaking boat in the rain. At least it's not 100 degrees out. Oh, you hear that thunder? <laughs> Ooh. Moving out. Yeah, it took me a whole year. It took me about a year to get past 73 on this boat. And I had and I had a big pond I was trying to get that 73 in. <laughs> I come out here, get 73 like that, or 71. I kind of want to put 12S on it. What do you guys think? All right, let's bring her in. Let's throw 12 vests on tour. <laughs> yep, this is my this is my my third hull. This is the third one. First two, I, I broke them. High speed flips. I messed up this uh, this bracket right here. I broke the Z bend hole. That's why I got two breakaway holes there. But uh, I had to I had to make two of these now. I think this is my third one. Seems to work okay. 66. All right. So let's throw 12s on it. Kind of wanted to put that on my my my. Oh, man, I'm kind of scared to put 12s on it. The last time. The, whenever I messed the motor up, it was on 8S. I didn't even have it on 12S when I smoked the rotor, which, which is odd, you know? Oh, I'm kind of scared to put it on 12S, though. One twenty-two. Don't really want to go no higher than that. One twenty-one. One thirty-four. These rotors are very sensitive. It's a solid magnet, not four different magnets. It's a solid magnet. So. Yep, about, about as hot as I want to get her. I kind of want to, I kind of want to run the twin cat. I've never run it in the park pond. Let's do the twin cat. I'm gonna do the twin cat. Nope. I'm gonna put 12S on it, okay? And I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna 
wait about 20 minutes till I run it. I'm actually gonna go to the car and pick up a water bottle and squeeze some water in there, cool that motor down. All right, so I got my batteries in and I went to the truck and got my, my water bottle. I'm just gonna put it in here, squeeze some water through it. Yep, it's coming out the rudder. So I'm trying to just cool my motor down. Like I said, this is like a, a high speed saw boat, not, not, not built to do ovals. All right, she's at 83, that's good. Start. Okay. This white dog. Great googly freaking moogly. Great googly freaking moogly, boy. It's really coming down now. These are 5500s, they shouldn't last long. Hopefully I don't have any water. No, that was pretty nice. Oh, it's sputtering. doing the same thing it was doing earlier wonder why it's doing that boys it, it's not it's not a solder all right let's bring it in before we mess something up something ain't right okay well wonder what that is it, you hear it sputtering like that now that's something I really haven't encountered. I mean, I, well, I guess I have. It would, I've, I've encountered a, that sputter without that type of power, like, and it did it on 8S when I first put it in the water. It was running a little rich, remember? <laughs> so I don't know what that sputter is. That's weird. It's kind of weird. This is an ESC issue because I, I don't know the history of the speed control. One of my viewers sent it to me. So, okay, did you hear that? Huh. I wonder if it's the battery. Oh, I don't have another one. I didn't bring a second one. I wonder if it's this RX pack. It could be. Oh yeah, okay, okay, so that kind of makes sense. Really, not really, cause it did it for a split second earlier on two occasions, that sputter, but it had a fully charged receiver pack. I need to get a better pack. I know, I need to get a BAC, I know. Uh, I don't want to be in a doghouse, boys. So, yep, all right, so I, I should have put these batteries in the animal. All good, all good. Let's see what it did on that one pass, probably in the 60s. So I'll see you guys back at the shop, okay? 70, 70, 12S. So uh, I'll see you at the shop. We'll probably just run it on 8S. Hell, I got 71 on 8, uh, 8S, 70 on 12S. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Or no, I'll see you at the shop. How about that? Alright, so I'm actually back at the shop. I got my setup glass out. I'm going to go over my setup for uh, one of my viewers had asked me about setting up this boat and what I've learned over the years. So I'll go over my setup with you here in a second. Uh, first, I want to uh, explain to you what I just found out. I'm a cyphernologist or a big dummy. <laughs> so you guys see where the voltage is here, right? 7.47 so it's discharged <laughs> okay and we had only run that one pack out all right so what i did i charged this battery up and i charged my other battery up that i had left home so we ran the one pack out and it, it kind of acted funny whenever i first got on it so what i did i, I had storage charged this battery I threw it in the boat. I threw the other one on storage charge. I got home and I was going to 
Well, we are going to test this one and the other one to see if that sputtering is because it was storage charged. So, I think that's what it was. Okay. So, so you know, I just, I was in a hurry. I was trying to beat the rain. And, um, yeah, so I have the other battery charging. Okay. So, I basically started off with this battery at 4 or 3.85. That's why I storage charged my batteries. 3.85. Okay. We ran the pack out. It's at 4.7, and that that explains the sputter. Okay, so while we're waiting on that battery to charge, uh, I'll go ahead and go over my setup real quick with you guys. So this is not the, the stock strut, but I will tell you where I used to run the stock strut. I used to run the stock strut flat on the tabletop. Make sure the drive shaft is at zero. It likes flat like in line with the ride surface okay uh if anything lift it up a little bit maybe a millimeter or two on my strut this is a flat bottom i'm actually running the back of it flat like on the tabletop and maybe maybe a thousandth of an inch maybe uh a, a third of a degree down if that and it's been running good i hadn't touched this in a while so it's been running good that was my 95 mile an hour tune right there you guys see where it's at okay all right so that's important i usually try to run my rudder canted forward a little bit i feel that helps not much in a straight in a turn it definitely does but uh i believe in canting my rudder forward on this boat i i I actually yeah I always make sure it's got some lean forward uh, with these RC boat bits trim tabs I actually run these trim tabs as high as I could get them I actually filed the top of my trim tab like like rounded it so I can get it even higher when I set it up on this hole uh, I've run these trim tabs flat I found running them flat with the bottom of the ride surface I found if you run them flat it, it it's just too much down to in my opinion it's too much down and it, it causes the boat to like veer I mean you can get it running right with them like laid down flat I found if you run these trim tabs butted up to the overhang on the top of the boat here and you run that gap right there okay you run that gap uh, it acts like another ride surface it's a break like you got these ride pads you got these steps okay it's almost like another little break in a, in a mini step back there okay a mini ride surface and i don't even run them touching the touching the glass okay with that break i have them i have them about maybe a millimeter maybe a millimeter off the ride surface on both of them i actually have some lean or dead rise i guess dead rise is what you want to call it the inside's lower than the outside so i'm not i'm i don't know i was thinking my thought process um is less amount of trim tab in the water and it's like flicking that water out flicking it out L less ride surface in the water is my thought so it's got a little more in or a little closer to the right surface and higher on the outside both of them are like that you see that see how that one's closer outside's higher see how this one's closer outside's higher okay that's the exact same setup i run on that 106 mile per hour run pretty much okay um yeah i think on that 106 mile an hour run i think i had my strut flat it was like dead nuts flat maybe even had it yeah i think i did have it lifted up about a millimeter or two but it was flat lifted up a little bit because i was running a high kv motor with a big prop so i lifted my strut up a little bit so less prop would be in the water less resistance less load higher rpm that was my thinking okay my cg i just i just like weighed it out and i and I, I measured it out with this guy right here. It's um, I run it an inch and a half to one inch 
behind the step. So your forward step, about an inch and a half, it actually falls basically just forward of my water exit. I think that's a stock water exit. I think that's a stock. Yeah, I think that is. So, well, I guess the K. The K. I use my step as my reference. I don't measure my boats from the transom. I measure forward and, you know, all like meticulous and I don't do that. Roundabout's fine with me. You know, I've it works. Okay. So yeah, I think that battery's about done. That's my setup. Plug this discharge battery in. Cause I want to see what it does. Yes, I'm running EC5s with an adapter because I'm not even sure I want to run this boat on 12S all the time. So all right so let's see if it sputters oh it ain't sputtering now okay okay so I don't know. I don't know. But that does make sense, though. This battery's completely discharged. It's had a, a second to, like, bring itself back up to charge, I guess. But um, I definitely think it was the discharged receiver pack. All right. I, I'm not even, it, it didn't sputter, so I'm not even going to bring the other one out. I know that's what it was. I storage charged this battery, and I ran it storage charged it wasn't fully charged <laughs> so we'll see you guys next time it it happens to the best of us you know uh silly little things like that i've actually storage charged batteries and brung them out for other boats to run <laughs> like in a hurry charging several boats batteries uh yeah yeah so we'll see you guys next time we'll take it out tomorrow okay i'll try to take it back out to the park pond with a fully charged battery and and just see if that's what it is okay it's gotta be it's gotta be we'll see you next time